their defect of betrayal. Well, uh, when we talk about betrayal, when we talk about psychological defects, uh, there are three traitors that all of us without exception carry inside. Right? These three traitors are known in the Bible, in different or several religions, and so on. Judas, Pilate, Caiaphas. They, not, they uh, not only existed historically, but also psychologically. And all of us, without exception, have them inside. Right? Now, let's say something else here. When we talk about betrayal, uh, there is a prior path or a prior agreement that can be betrayed as the first condition or the first analysis, the first idea, the first argument to understand better the word betrayal. Right. This is the first thing to understand better this scenario, this psychological defect that is split and divided in these three different psychological defects that little by little gradually during the rest of the lectures uh, we'll understand hopefully better. Right? If there is a path or an agreement that is not fulfilled, well, we have their betrayal, right? Treason. Right? So, it is necessary to have a path, an agreement, a bone that can be broken to understand better this word, this term, all right? Now, talking about the psychological behavior, uh, making the association with history, even with the Bible, we'll be analyzing today's, uh, in today's lecture the different subdivisions that come from this specific psychological defect. Now, every single authentic initiate, all initiates of all ages have passed through this specific uh, process, esoteric process called the cosmic drama. All right. The cosmic drama is a condition for all those authentic masters, spiritual masters from ancient times. All right. They know all of them without exception. It does not matter if they are in a male uh, body or in a female physical body. All of them know that they should fulfill, they must pass 
by this cosmic drug. All right? If we remember something called, in our current traditions, Holy Week, the Holy Week, probably we'll understand it better. All right? Now, let's start the analysis, the reflection about these three different psychological effects that gradually, little by little, specifically in the second mountain of the esoteric season, but also from now on for every one of us, all of us uh, have them inside. Let's talk about Judas. Well, first of all, Judas is the demon of desire. The demon of desire. Remember, please, that when we talk about desires, at the same time we are talking about psychological defects. Desire of smoking, desire of playing video games, the desire of criticizing others' behaviors, desire of judging others, desire of dancing, desire of... Uh, Maturation, desire of watching pornography, desire of falling asleep too late at night, for example. Each one of our psychological defects is a desire. Right? And this Judas one we carry inside, at the same time, is the enemy of nature. This specific type of psychological effect is the enemy of nature because he doesn't want that we create or crystallize the solar bodies in the sexual alchemy prior to create the different solar bodies working correctly or at least as better as we can during sexual alchemy is necessary to release the essence our consciousness which is trapped inside of each one of our own psychological defects right that's why it's the demon of desire every single desire every single psychological defect we carry inside is Judas at the same time All right All right now when we talk about Judas we should understand as well that desire is the source of strength. All right? If we surrender to our desires, it means if we don't practice self-observation to detect our own weaknesses which are represented in each one of our psychological defects or desires, we'll be its slaves. They're slaves. Right? And we won't change inside. will continue being the same. Even if we memorize all these teachings, or even if we accept it, this specific knowledge or any other type of knowledges. It is not about accepting, but about transforming our own psychological country, our own inner world. All right? So, 
This represents our desires, our temptations, right? and all this fascination in the physical world. Probably, uh, or almost sure, we are slaves of appearances right away, right now, currently, right? Not always, for sure, and not for every one of us, but many times, appearance means everything to us. We don't go deeper. We don't go deeper in the depths of the psychological world, of our own inner world. We are slaves even of our own appearance. Necessary to learn to detect all our temptations, desires, illusions, fascinations represented in each one of our own psychological defects. Right? Thanks to self observation, to prior self observation, and then the elimination of each one of our, our desires, asking, making the petition to our own Divine Mother mentally to delete it. Only through that process called psychological death, psychological death, which is the elimination of each one of our psychological effects, it's possible to release the fire. Right? Our fire is our own Christ. Christ is fire. But unfortunately, unfortunately, we've been following each one of our own and inner temptations, desires. Thanks to, uh, to the fact, thanks to the fact that we don't self-observe ourselves, our inner reactions, all those thousands and even millions of desires that we've been forming, creating since, wow, too many human existences, right? Now, when we talk about the possibility of defeating this demon, okay, this demon, is defeated by denying ourselves how do we deny ourselves again and again and all over again self-observation to detect our own temptations, all those desires of laziness, pride, revenge, sexual desires, all those inner things, invisible subjective elements that for sure without exception all of us carry inside. We self detect them immediately, please. There comes the inner petition to our Divine Mother to start this denying of ourselves. It's possible with practice, it's possible to defeat our own Judas. Being authentic practitioners, yes, little by little, grain by grain, but gradually we'll feel, we'll get, we'll achieve the results, right? Please remember this and reflect on it as well. This demon is defeated by denying ourselves.
because if we continue following ourselves, following our own theories, concepts, desires, we won't change. Never. No matter what we what we believe about us. will continue being deceived. Deceived by our own ego. Right? It's pretty important to learn how to fight against this demon if we honestly and seriously want any type of advance in our inner esoteric work. Alright? Yes, again and again and all over again. Desire is fire. And we'll rescue it only from instant to instant with self-observation and that inner petition that is being told, the inner petition to our own Divine Mother. Prove it. Don't believe me, please. Never believe me. Just prove it. Inside of each one of us is our female part of God. She's waiting for us in order to believe us in order to delete all of our own psychological defects. In order to transform us. But the condition is self-observation and that inner and serious, sincere, honest petition to her. My Divine Mother, please delete me this fear. My, delete, my Divine Mother, please delete me this sexual desire. This laziness. This revenge, this desire of attacking this person, etc., etc., etc. Right? Little by little, gradually, we'll get it, we'll achieve it, and we'll feel finally gradual changes. Yes. Desire is fire. And dying psychologically will rescue as will. Do we think we have will? Do we seriously believe that we are people with will until we don't believe, eliminate with our own Divine Mother all of our desires, temptations, fascinations, and so on we won't have will never alright, let's talk about the second trader second trader is called Tyler Right. All of them, without exception, all of them, all these three uh, traitors belong to the cosmic drama. From now on, if we continue or if we start with our own esoteric work, the work of transforming ourselves. We start the elimination of each one of the, all these traitors. But it's only in the process of the second mountain of the esoteric vision where we finally delete them. Where we finally eliminate them. We start the process now if, obviously, if we want. But the elimination of each one of them will be a reality, will be a fact, 
in the process of mastery. Only in the process of mastery, second mountain of the esotericism will achieve it. Any one of us, without exception. No matter how heavy is the karma that we are carrying inside, it doesn't matter. There is much mercy in the higher dimensions of the universe. All those authentic divine hierarchies, they are observing us carefully nowadays. They already know which one of us is working internally, esoterically, with the correct procedures. And as soon as they detect any one of us working esoterically, practicing the elimination of each one of our psychological defects, little by little, it's a gradual process. Always it's been told, we'll seek it, we'll achieve our own self-realization, and we receive all their help. Now, let's talk about time. Well, we talk about pilot. Uh, we are talking about the demand of the mind. Demand of the mind. Our psyche, our mind was created to reflect, to analyze the whole processes of life and death. Alright? But as soon as we uh, were falling into the generation for decation of the sexual creative energy, and it started our own process of degeneration, our mind degenerated as well. Prior to this current human race, all those psyches, all those minds, thousands of years ago, in previous uh, mankind, in previous generations, uh, they reflected a lot. They analyzed by themselves. They weren't too ge degenerated as we are currently. Right? Is the demon of the mind, and at the same time, is the enemy of nature. Excuse me. Is the enemy? Is the enemy? Of wisdom. We can prove by ourselves that our mind currently is controlled, governed by different types of subjective theories, subjective ideas, represented at the same time in each one of our psychological defects. If we delete all those psychological effects that we carry inside, gradually we'll be releasing our own wisdom. Remember something, the other 97% of consciousness that all of us have um, carried inside is trapped, is bottled in each one of our psychological effects. All right? That's why a pilot is the enemy of wisdom. If we don't die psychologically, it means if we don't eliminate or delete with the help of our own Divine Mother, all of our justifications, okay? To talk uh, more clearly, pilot represents in each one of us our justifications. excuses on the field of practical life. All right? We like to wash our hands. 
when we are facing any type of difficult situation or problem in this third dimension, in the physical world. Right? Unfortunately, we get involved, we get identified with the problem that we are facing at any moment of our lives. We don't take advantage of those moments, of those instants that we are facing problems or any type of negative events or even positive events of life to recognize, to detect our own excuses or justifications. We don't accept that we are the only responsible for all our unpleasant situations, for all our karma. We are the only responsible for all our life. Right? Always we find escapes justifications, excuses to don't accept our responsibilities facing the different negative, difficult events in life. Right? If we don't detect sooner than later all these type of justifications, excuses, escapes, right? will continue being the same and we won't change we won't transform anything inside of us in fact we won't release and taste our own wisdom important to learn to judge our excuses, our justifications, to judge ourselves. Self-criticism is crucial, is essential when any one of us want to really become ourselves in a wise person, an authentic wise person is someone that doesn't carry justifications, excuses, etc., etc., etc. That person already deleted. to judge ourselves without mercy. Self-criticism is basic. Self-judging. Without mercy to each one of all those justifications and excuses is essential in order to feel our own inner transformation. It's called the enemy of wisdom because it doesn't uh, it doesn't let us to die psychologically on ourselves. Without the elimination of the ego, it's not possible to have to get our own authentic objective wisdom. Wisdom arrives with psychological death. If we don't die psychologically, we won't have wisdom. Right? Because this demon is absolutely interested in making us continue being the same. Right? with the same behaviors, same ideas, same concepts. Right? 
how do we defeat this demon? Okay, it's possible to defeat it. Without mercy, ruthlessly, literally, ruthlessly. Yes, it means without mercy. Remember something, please. It, it is something for our own good and even for a common good. If we change, if we accept all our responsibilities, if we recognize all our justifications, excuses, on the field of on the field of life, if we delete them, we'll be something new. We'll be wise people. All right. Instead of justificating ourselves, instead of excusing ourselves to not take the responsibility in the different events we face in life is better to detect, to analyze, to recognize, to finally delete, delete all those thousands of pilots that all of us carry inside. Demon number three. Demon number three. Caiaphas. Well, this is the worst of all these three traitors. Right. When we talk about Caiaphas, this is the demon of ill will. That's why is the enemy of truth. If the truth is our own inner being, the one that is trapped inside of our ego, our particular God, he makes even the impossible to don't let us incarnate our own truth. Don't let us release our entire consciousness, our wisdom, our own inner being, literally. All right. He represents, for example, in our psychological world, he represents all our words, omissions, even intentions, even if they are the best intentions to purify ourselves, he represents them. The real value, authentic value for divine hierarchies of our intentions is nothing. Excuse me for telling you this, but divine hierarchies, well, they care nothing about intentions.
They are not interested in our intentions. A hundred and one percent. They only believe in facts, in actions. Because love is in actions and never in intentions. We could have the best intentions, but if we don't pass to actions, to facts, it works for nothing. The value of intentions is zero. Alright? Now, let's put some examples, several examples about how this ill will or bad will controls and governs our current life, our current human existence, even when apparently we are seriously really interested in our own self-realization, in our own inner purification. Let's see. Several examples to understand it better, hopefully. For example, an ill will or bad will to establish uh, disciplines of work. Yes, esoteric work, obviously. Disciplines of work, All right? Psychological death, meditation, relaxation and concentration, after travel, mental travel, development of the intuition, and so on. During all this course or cycle of lectures, we've been sharing and spreading all these uh, techniques, procedures, practical procedures to start our own inner change. Alright? Uh, what else, for example? That ill will or bad will to, to prove what we say here. Ill will, that will for the practices of concentration. Remember, please, concentration is basic, is crucial in order to achieve, to seek, to deserve our self realization. There is a technique called concentration and relaxation. Alright? Do we have ill or bad will for concentration? For this practice, for relaxation and concentration techniques, for example, not, not only for concentration, also for meditation. For practicing meditation, it's necessary to release our authentic will, which is trapped inside each one of our own psychological defects. The releasing of that inner impulse, that inner strength, is essential, is crucial to start our own self-discipline in meditation, to practice meditation, to feel, to achieve gradually the results of practicing meditation, authentic and correct techniques of meditation. Not every single technique of meditation works. There are several techniques of meditation that don't work at all. They do nothing inside of each one of us. Only specific techniques of meditation are currently allowed, accepted by the divine hierarchies. For example, 
ill will, ill will, bad will for astral travel. Astral unfolding. How do we establish our own astral travel discipline, for example? At least one, twice, three times, four times per week. It's something great and a half. The astral unfolding is something unforgettable. It's something amazing, it's something positive, it's something conscious. It's something not only for our own good, but also for a common good. Bad will or ill will for self-observation. If we seriously want to know ourselves, it's necessary to detect what is subjective, what is negative, which in fact is controlling and governing our entire lives. This is the first practical step to achieve our own inner transformation. Right? Do we have, have we felt ill will, but will? for the inner petition to our Divine Mother in order to delete our psychological defects. Even if it is something simple, the inner petition, my Divine Mother, please delete me this fear, my Divine Mother, please delete me this envy, this pride, this doubt, this uh, too much thinking, all these lower emotions, resentments, rancors, hates, all these violences that I carry inside as soon as we detect it, right? Do we have ill will or bad will to practice sexual alchemy? Do we have ill will or bad will to spread all this knowledge for free? without any type of interest? Well, the answer is something absolutely personal. Absolutely personal, because each one of us is a particular world inside. Do we carry inside that ill will, that bad will, to give the little jump to achieve sooner than later our own natural unfolding, for example, that little jump that was explained four or three weeks ago, very recently it was explained already, only with that little jump is possible to achieve it sooner than later, based on uh, my own experience, I can assure you that. For sure, without a doubt, without exception, it's possible for all of us, only that little jump. If you want to check, to review that conference number 37, you'll find that you'll see how easy, how simple it is. The little jump to deserve, to achieve, in fact, sooner or later, the assault travel. Right, but unfortunately, we do have goodwill for the opposite activities to the esoteric work. Right, our own Kaisas has extremely goodwill to watch TV. to only read books about these uh, esoteric topics, for example. Obviously, we need the base, we, do, we need the theory about all these teachings to finally pass and go to the practice. But when you stay only on reading books, you're becoming yourself a fanatic, right? 
<laughs> yes, and definitely many of us, probably most of us, like reading books. We love reading books too much. Yes, remember, we need the theory. We need the base. And there are some books that, yes, probably they uh, have inside the base. The objective theory to start the process. But please, sooner than later, start the practice. For example, our own Caifas has an amazing will to criticize others' lives, others' behaviors. To criticize and even to judge, to judge others' behaviors. our own self-criticism, our own self-judging, that's crucial, that's essential. Instead of criticizing others' behaviors, it's much better to criticize ourselves. Caifas has an amazing energy to fornicate. So spill the sexual creative energy, right, to sleep, for example. To follow all our desires. Only practice makes perfect. The authentic esoteric work is only for practitioners. Only with practice, there's a new master, an authentic one, a real one. And remember, Caitas is the worst of all of them. Because it's the bad will, the ill will, represented in our omissions, negative words, negative actions on the field, of real life. Right? That's why Caiaphas is the enemy of Christ, of our own inner Christ, because he's the enemy of truth. If the truth is our own Christ, our own inner being, well, the possibility of defeating this specific type of psychological defense is only possible with conscious sacrifices. Let's write it down. This demon is defeated. With conscious sacrifices. sacrifices and voluntary ailments it's only possible to defeat this Kaitas, all those thousands of Kaitas, through conscious sacrifices and voluntary ailments, to detect sooner than later, as soon as we can, all the different types of traitors that we carry inside, all right, in our daily life through the interaction with the external world 
with people is for sure possible to detect them in order to delete it. Self-observation, the inner petition will lead us to our final goal. But anyway, let's remember something pretty important here. All defects, no matter what it is or what they are, are considered traitors by divine law. All type of egos, no matter what they are, are strictly, without mercy, considered by divine law as traitors. Right? They are judged by treason. Thank you very much for attending this new lecture, this new video conference. If there is any question or doubt about it, please let me know, and shortly I will respond to you. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.